despite predicting most of the questions for GCSE Geography Paper 1 and 2. AQA haven't managed to get me yet, so listen up closely as I give you my predictions for GCSE Geography Paper 3. Just a reminder before I start that although I've got quite a few predictions right for Papers 1 and 2, there's still no guarantee. These are just predictions. So don't come shout at me if what I say next doesn't directly come up. What I have tried to do though is give you some top tips and a few slightly broader areas of things that are very likely to come up as well. So section A, that's the one all about the pre-release. So hopefully you're familiar already with the pre-release booklet on energy in the UK and the Morecambe Bay Tidal Barrage Scheme, that proposed development. Now, in Section A, there's a range of questions. I'd expect some shorter questions to do with some of the graphs on there. So firstly, make sure you know, uh, yeah, you're familiar with what the graphs are showing. But in terms of my main prediction, I'd go with a nine mark question about the tidal barrage. And most likely, it'll be something along the lines of, should the project go ahead? So it might say, you know, to what extent do you agree that the project should go ahead? And that would be a nine mark question. In terms of my top tips for that, I'd, I'd, I'd suggest kind of having a partial argument. So maybe saying I partially agree that it should go ahead. And then that way you can write a couple of paragraphs about why you think it should go ahead. And then maybe an alternative viewpoint as well. Remember that you need to use some facts and figures from the resource booklet, but don't just copy out reams and reams of it. So quote some key figures, such as the fact that it's going to create 13,000 uh, jobs and the fact that it's going to cost £10 billion. But then expand on that and fully explain why those are positives or why those are negatives. So yeah, now my question definitely focused on the Tidal project. Um, some sort of decision making. Do you think it should go ahead along those lines anyway? Um, there's some other possible questions. There's a bit of an emphasis on renewable energy and fossil fuels. So I'd expect a question on the positives and negatives of those or something along those lines. Um, something related to energy security as well. So there's a bit in the booklet about uh, factors affecting energy security. So I'd expect something along those lines as well. Um, and yeah, there's a bit about the three A's of energy security as well. And a bit about the energy trilemma. So make sure you have a look at the booklet and make sure you're familiar with what that means because I would expect some questions to be based on that as well. In section B, we've got a lot of questions about field work. Now, the first bit of that section is actually unseen field work. Um, so this is where you'll get questions on unseen, unfamiliar scenarios, kind of made up field work scenarios. The sort of questions I'd expect in this are questions such as uh, ones where it says, you know, suggest an appropriate data presentation technique for this given scenario. So, you know, it might tell you some students are collecting questionnaire data, recording their data as percentages, suggest, you know, a presentation method. Just remember, if it's percentages, I'd go with a pie chart. If your data's got categories, I'd go with a bar graph. Um, if your data is showing change over time or over distance, then I'd go with a line graph. Another question I'd expect is something about uh, reliability maybe so how could the reliability of something be improved remember to make something more reliable you need to collect more data or use secondary data um, or collect more data at different times of day different times of year i've also seen lots of questions before about um, questionnaires and how could a questionnaire be improved so it wouldn't surprise me if that came up as well uh, in terms of a questionnaire a lot of the time the answers in the question read the context of the situation clearly and um, and it, it should be obvious it might say students are looking at investigating tourism in, in a town suggest you know a question they could ask so a simple question would be asking locals do you think tourism is positive or not finally in section c this is where you get questions about your own field work so you should have been on two different occasions of fieldwork. You should have a human one and a physical one. You need to know a bit about uh, what data you collected and why. Where did you go and why? Um, how did you present your data? 
and what were your overall conclusions and evaluation. You don't need to learn specific data, like you don't need to remember the specific measurements as in the actual numbers you recorded, but it's worth remembering what your overall conclusion is. If I was going to, it's quite hard to predict this by the way, but if I was going to narrow it down and say what I'd def definitely, or you know, what I'd put my money on coming up, I'd go with maybe a question about physical fieldwork and how you presented your data in your physical fieldwork. What, what graphs did you draw and why? I'd also go with a question about human fieldwork and what methods you, uh, what you, what you method you did in terms of your data collection. So what data collection methods did you use and how did that help you um, answer your hypothesis? Um, a couple of other small things that haven't come up for a while is asking you about how did your inquiry link to geographical theory? So that would be a bit of a niche question that could come up as well. So, for example, if you're looking at a river, you might talk about, um, in theory, a river gets wider and deeper and faster flowing the further down the river you go. And so that's the geographical theory that might link to what data you collected. Finally, if I was going to put money on a nine mark question for um, the fieldwork section, it would be around improvements, as in how could you improve your inquiry? That's something that's not come up for a while. Um, so yeah, it'd be something along the lines of, yeah, how could you have improved one of your inquiries to make it more reliable? Something along those lines, maybe. Um, again, if you want to improve reliability, collect more data, use secondary data. Um, whereas if you want to improve accuracy, then that's more about using more advanced equipment to make sure your measurements were actually correct.